I'm pregnant with your husband's child. I was speechless at my sister's sudden confession. So I want a divorce. I'm going to remarry your husband. I'm sorry I stole your husband, a doctor earning $10,000 a month. Next to my sister, my husband was looking down at me with a serious face, and my sister's hand was tightly holding his. I was so shocked that I couldn't speak. What's with that face? As usual, you are ugly. That's why your husband has a change of heart. From now on, you are going to live on your meager salary. Hearing my sister's loud laugh, I felt my heart cooling down. I'm the one who wants to say sorry. They probably don't know. I'm laughing in my heart without telling them about my real sister's terrible misunderstanding. My name is Jessica. I've been married to Brandon for three years. I met my husband in a university tennis club. Tennis was my only stress relief in my suffocating university life, which was full of studying. Since the club itself was a cheerful activity, I often spotted him on the tennis court on campus, sacrificing my study time. You have a nice warm-up. The first one to talk to me was my husband. My husband, who was in a different faculty and didn't seem to be busy studying, always came to me first when I visited the club. I played tennis until high school. I quit playing seriously because of an injury, but you are good at it. It's completely different from me who is just playing. I can teach you. I think we're a great match. I believe such words, which seemed like a typical pickup line, from the bottom of my heart. In fact, I had never dated a man before and had hardly even had a proper conversation because I was always studying. I was completely taken in by my husband's positive attitude. I had no idea of the hard times awaiting me five years later. After graduating from the university, we got married. Although it would be a lie to say that we had no fights or breakups during our school years, I always forgave my husband's sloppy behavior, and our relationship dragged on until graduation. I'm sure I'll become a good husband. How much I believed in his proposal, I wonder. Now it seems doubtful, but at that time, I still had trust in my husband. There were feelings of a five-year-old rotten relationship. He's not a bad person at heart, and I accepted his proposal with a rather light feeling. We both started working. I had a strong desire to work, and my husband didn't oppose me going out. Rather, I think he encouraged me to go for it. In fact, with the income of two people, we had quite a household income. Having this much economic freedom at a young age, I think we were blessed. We didn't have children. For our jobs, it was still early in our careers, so we focused on setting up our lives first. I was climbing up the career ladder smoothly and having fulfilling days. But oh, what's this? I inadvertently went to the smartphone that my husband had left in the living room. A message from an unknown name. Normally, I tried not to pry into his privacy, but my husband had a history of passive cheating. It was back in our student days, but then he was secretly communicating with a girl from another club. I entered my husband's birthday and easily unlocked his smartphone. I opened the messaging app and was shocked. As I feared, there were flirty exchanges with a particular woman recorded. I immediately confronted my husband. His confused state was like a monkey in the zoo. It's not like that. This was just a lapse in judgment. So you admitted cheating? You had a relationship with this woman? Well, that's, let's make love at our usual hotel. Kisses. You are not young to send such a message. She is a high school graduate and a newcomer. Summing up my husband's story, he basically cheated with a new female employee. My husband was her trainer. It's a common story, but I wonder what kind of education he was giving her. I'm really sorry. I swear I won't make such a mistake again. In the end, I forgave my groveling husband. This has been happening since our university days. 
I can't help but sigh at my sloppy husband's attitude. Unlike our student days, we had too many obligations. If we were to divorce, we would have to report it to our families, friends, and coworkers, and it would make them disappointed. Honestly, it was easier to give my husband a horse golden than to do such troublesome things. I made him write an apology letter. If he made the same mistake again, he wouldn't get away with it. That was a promise. That's how our married life continued, barely surviving several storms. One day, I received news of my father's death. According to my crying mother on the phone, he seemed to have collapsed on the way home from drinking and was taken to the hospital. It appeared to be a stroke. My father's discovery was late, and on top of that, last night was in the middle of winter, so he unfortunately never came back to life. He was 60 years old, just before retirement. I took care of all the funeral arrangements. My mother cried all the time and wasn't in any condition to manage. With the support of relatives and a hollowed-out mother, I barely managed to complete the funeral proceedings. I felt sorry for the inconvenience to the workplace, but my colleagues and superiors never complained. I'll never forget about it. One issue was to deal with my sister. I have a sister two years older than me. Her name is Anna. After graduating from high school, my sister left our parents' home, so I hadn't seen her for nearly 10 years. The circumstances of her living were problematic. My sister had always been a troublemaker, causing trouble for our parents. She had been involved with the police more than once or twice. Her relationships with men were particularly unrestrained, and she had been involved with multiple adult men since junior high school. Some of these men were married. Because of my sister's behavior, my parents scolded her all the time. Live a decent life. Don't ruin your own life. Although it was sound advice, it didn't seem to resonate with my sister at all. Finally, it was discovered that she had secretly given money from our house to a male host, which led to a huge fight with both of our parents, especially our father. Get out, he said. It's not surprising that my father declared this inheritance. I don't even think of you as my daughter anymore. In response to his words, my sister also retorted and stormed out of the house. He will want to come back to such a poor and gloomy house, as she said. My sister never showed her face to us again until my father passed away. Even though I had to inform her of our father's death, her cell phone number was still the same. So I had to send her a short message informing her of our father's death on the same day. My mom said there's no need for that, I explained. My mom was angry, but I couldn't ignore my sister. There was no contact from my sister until just before the funeral. If she doesn't come, it's fine then, I thought. Just when I was thinking that, my sister finally showed up at the post-cremation meal where we were breaking our fast after mourning. My sister's face, with her makeup thicker by three times than before, faced us after about ten years. Huh, so you get married without much upgrading to our late father, she remarked. My sister seemed interested in the fact that I had brought my husband, who had managed to participate in the ceremony during the break from his work. He had been timid, meek as a lamb, until my sister showed up. He is not the type of person who came here briskly in ceremonial situations, I explained. I had a mess his mothering. I wish this would end soon, I thought. Your husband isn't bad looking, you see. My sister asked, what did you get to know him at work? We met through a club in college. Our workplaces are completely different, I replied. Huh, you hooked a good one. You are always studying, right? She continued. Well, if you could get a man with a decent education, that's good. You don't seem to be struggling with money, she remarked. Well, since one of us is a doctor, the salary is decent. We both work. But more importantly, you should properly greet our father, I suggested. 
Huh, a doctor, my sister mused, her eyes seeming to plot something. He may have even licked her lips. My husband, subjected to her snake-like gaze, was simply flustered. We disbanded on that day. My sister, who said she would contact me soon, didn't contribute any condolence money in the end. I had no intention of following up on my mother's lament, and fill your child things started to get strange after about six months. Although the sadness of losing my father had not yet healed, I had almost completely forgotten about the days of the funeral and my sister. On the other hand, it seems that my sister remembered it well about my husband, Brandon. After work, I saw a familiar figure near the station. The navy suit was the one I had just cleaned for yesterday. What surprised me was the sight of the woman next to him. They were holding hands, looking friendly. Again, my husband's bad habits. As the flames of anger flared up, I realized my husband's crime was not just that. This time I was taken aback more than angry. Next to my husband, flowering her mini skirt, was my sister, Hannah, holding my husband's hand. My husband cheating with my own sister, I blurted out involuntarily, then decided to follow them. If this is truly an affair, I will not forgive my husband this time. I've been tormented by my husband's womanizing many times, but if it's with my own sister, it's beyond a joke. Moreover, the occasion where they met face to face was at my dad's funeral. I'll definitely catch them in the act. I gritted my teeth and focused on not losing sight of them as expected. They headed towards the hotel district. It was still daytime. My husband was supposed to be at work. I wonder what kind of excuse he used to leave the office. They walked past numerous hotels, glued even closer together. At one of the hotels where they finally stopped, they started kissing. Disgusting. This is the first time I have witnessed my husband's infidelity. Then they went into the hotel in front of them. I called my husband's smartphone after learning the two of them were off the hook for a while, holding back my nausea. After an irritating wait, my husband finally picked up the phone. What is it? I'm working. There's something I really need to check with you. Who are you with right now? With my colleagues and boss, of course. We have an important meeting coming up. Oh, so you have important meetings at the Love Hotel Jewelry Resort. Quite a flippant name, isn't it? How do you? I also know that my sister is with you. You're the one who needs to explain. Just wait there with my sister. After I had an ace up my sleeve, Brandon's voice seemed muffled and raspy. Finally, after checking with my sister, he informed me of the room number. All right. I embraced myself and stormed into the hotel. I explained the situation to the receptionist and paid for another room. After all this humiliation he has put me through, I won't show any mercy to my husband. When I opened the door to room 402, my husband was waiting there with a pale face. He was already dressed in a gown, having taken off his suit. My sister had the same gown as my husband and a mocking expression on her face. The pitiful life showed up. She started smirking, showing no sign of remorse. On the contrary, she seemed to be enjoying the situation just like half a year ago. Her makeup was heavily plastered like paint. First, I confronted my sister. She was making a creepy face. Hannah, what are you thinking? You knew he's my husband, and you laid your hands on him, didn't you? Well, it's frustrating. After being kicked out of the house, I've had a really hard time. I was even abandoned by the host I was sponsoring. I didn't have a single thing going well for me. Despite all that, you live in a happy married life. You left home because of your selfishness, right? You troubled your parents till the end, and now you will try to ruin my family too. The chaos was there from the start. I heard from Brandon. It's truly pitiful because you always say harsh things. 
He doesn't even have a moment of peace at home. That's why I've been comforting him. Don't say whatever you want. This is a problem within our family. So you're just not satisfying your husband, are you? A boring woman like you. I'm different in that respect. I'm satisfying him. That's why we've been going out for half a year now. You're lying. It's been since right after my father's funeral. Understand me, Jessica. I was at my limit, too. You were always nagging me, and there was hardly any marital affection. We haven't even been intimate for over a year now. The husband exposing the couple's shame in front of his wife's sister, although embarrassing as it was to the point of crying, I returned it to my husband. The reason we couldn't stay as a couple was because of your womanizing. Have you forgotten your promise that you would never be dreaming again? That and on top of that, how come it's my sister? Besides, right after my father's funeral. Hey, stop building Brandon. It's not yours anymore, right, Brandon? My sister, who had interjected, seemed to be whispering something to my husband. He lifted his head, which had been lowered, and turned to me with determination. Now I was the one taken aback. Jessica, please divorce me. We're having a baby. What? You heard it. I'm pregnant. Now, of course, the father is Brandon. We've been making love almost every week since then, and this belly is the fruit of that. While speaking, her sister lovingly struck her belly. I was left speechless. This was no accident, but a deliberate act. From the start, my sister intended to steal my husband, and my husband also intended to end her marriage. That's why they didn't use contraception. They went out of their way to show me the baby in her belly. Too bad you don't stand a chance. He's mine now. He's leaving you and marrying me, right, Brandon? Yeah, let's be happy together. No, the three of us with our baby. I will do my best. You've been dumped. Truly my condolences. There goes your elegant lifestyle. From now on, that will be mine. After my sister's laughter echoed, I left the hotel room. To be honest, I don't remember how I made it home. I vomited three times in the toilet at home as I rushed up my stomach acid. I couldn't stop crying. I was more upset about being betrayed than about losing my husband. My husband and sister trampled on my humanity. Moreover, they made use of the baby. I cried all night and greeted the morning with a drained body. From that day on, my husband did not come home. There was no doubt that he had moved into my sister's place. Probably soon, he would pack up and leave. At that time, he might bring divorce papers of me along with a wedding ring we chose together five years ago, the worst day of my life. Nevertheless, I couldn't afford to take a day off from work. There were people who depended on me above all. Now, only my work is my anchor. Holding back nausea and tears, I gritted my teeth and headed to the workplace. A week later, while I was working as usual at the workplace, my husband and sister showed up in front of me. I was not very surprised, but the two of them seemed to be quite shocked. As my sister sat in a chair for a patient, holding her belly, she stared at me in my white coat in astonishment. Why are you here? because this is an obstetrics and gynecology department, and I am on duty today. The doctor who usually examines you is off due to some circumstances. You are a doctor, but what? Why Brandon was supposed to be the doctor? My sister looked puzzled, looking back and forth between my husband and me. I found it funny and explained it to her properly. You must have misunderstood, sister. I am the one who is a doctor. I worked hard to get into medical school. But at the funeral, Brandon said he was a doctor. You got yourself a highly educated husband. I only said if one person is a doctor, the salary will be decent. You misunderstood that, but Brandon said he was a doctor. As my sister's gaze pierced him, my husband, who seemed to have come along as an escort, only turned pale. 
he repeated clumsy excuses like a fish washed up on the beach. No, I was actually thinking of talking to you seriously. But then you mentioned getting pregnant. So you lied about being a doctor just to impress my sister and sleep with her. How pathetic. You're an adult doctor. You're a low-paid salesman. Well, that's. What do you mean, no paid? What about a million a month? We've already started looking at luxury apartments, and we've even contacted a regular car dealer to get a car. I've already maxed out my credit card on designer bags and shoes. Why would you waste money like that? And why is Jessica even at this hospital? She's supposed to be working at a different hospital. That's why I brought her here. When I took time off for my father's funeral, the doctor from this hospital helped me out multiple times. Now she has a situation, so I'm returning the favor. I've been working hard even while you two were cheating on me, Jessica. Listen, this is the end of us. I'm fed up with you. Go ahead and divorce or remarry, but make sure to pay me alimony. Wait, Jessica, I, I was wrong. I'll change my ways this time. Let's forget about the divorce for now. What are you saying? Remember when you cheated with a girl from your office? You promised me that if it happened again, you pay whatever amount of alimony I demanded. I showed my husband's written pledge I had taken with my smartphone camera at that time, complete with his signature and thumbprint. My husband let out a silent scream. At least five million yen? No, considering it was right after my father's funeral. I could even add a bit more. I'll contact a good lawyer. You two can wait and tremble. Wait, does that mean I have to pay a lemony too? Are you going to demand it from me? Of course, that's what it means to steal your sister's husband. Don't worry, I'll give you a grace period until the baby is born. That's my moral obligation as an obstetrician. But... Instead, make sure you paid up after the baby is born. I'll have you give up all your designer bags and shoes, and I'll add the funeral offering for my father. You apologize on your knees in front of his grave. I glared at my sister and walked away, started the regular examination. As soon as I instructed her to get on the bed, my sister fled the examination room. Perhaps she was afraid of me wearing rubber gloves. My husband remained, seemed to want to say something, but he meekly retreated under the cold stares of the nurses. Thinking that I wouldn't have to see my husband's face anymore, I felt truly liberated. And then another half a year later, it seems that my sister had a baby safely at a different obstetrics and gynecology clinic. Regardless of what my sister has done, the newborn baby is innocent. Knowing it was a healthy baby girl, I had relieved deep down. But as for my sister herself, it's a different story. I don't feel a shred of pity for her. As I declared after the baby was born, I sent my sister a letter demanding a lemony. The total is 5.3 million yen. Of course, 300,000 yen is for the condolence money for my father's funeral. I plan to deliver it to my mother. As for my husband, no, my ex-husband, life seems to be quite tough with the alimony he owes me. His workplace also, due to the rumors of his affair, he had no choice but to resign. It seems difficult for him to get rehired as a full-time employee. I heard he's juggling temp jobs now. As for who spread the rumors of the affair at his former workplace, I think it's best left unsaid. Furthermore, through the grapevine, I heard he hasn't gotten over his womanizing ways. He seems to be injuring my sister by hitting on any woman close at hand. At this rate, they seem like a suitable couple, and I feel truly refreshed being able to break up with my ex-husband. Now I'm dedicating myself to my work as an obstetrician. Today, two mothers-to-be with big bellies are waiting for my help.